at your end step is brought to you by Comic Town. Check them out at www.worldofcomictown.com or search for Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. Hello and welcome to At Your End Step. My name is Morgan. I'm here with Dave. Happy New Year. And Mike. Don't call it a comeback. Uh, it, I mean, it kind of is. Well, but we'll call it that. It's well, because I mean, we have been here for years. Yeah, but I mean, but we were gone and then we came back. Something, 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 and my name is Big Tears. Yeah, sure. Is that? I don't know the words of the song, I man. Either. I should know the next just, two lines, but I don't. just just know the beginning because no, that's all anyone ever says. It's fine. If I said any more actual lines, I'd have to pay a little Cool J three dollars. Yeah, you don't want that. No, he no. he needs it too. Yeah, well, maybe I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's no, probably doing some like he's on the, some he's on, show, he's right? On, uh, he's on the lip sync battle show. No, he's on the one with Robin. I know I've seen this. He's on a CBS show, and Chris O'Donnell's definitely in that show. And I mean, oh, really I think sad. it's it's uh, I think it's one of the N- NCISs. Or <laughs> it's some whatever. acronym. Yeah, <laughs> but every time I see it, I'm like, oh, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um. We have another fun-filled uh, episode for you uh, folks here. Uh, I hope you all had a uh, a, a wonderful uh, New Year and holiday season, uh, and uh, we all did. We all had you know many times. We hung out a lot too, as well, and played some games and that weren't necessarily magic because uh, magic's a little dead around this time of year. All in all, it's it's you know it, it's starting to be you know, reawoken uh, with you know, spoiler season and such uh, going on. But uh, uh, over your holiday, you really don't do anything except for uh, Moto Cube. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> I was really sad to go back to work today, I'll be honest. Yeah, me too. It was rough. It's like, the first day back after New Year's is just the worst. So. Yeah, because like, that's everyone's first day back as well, so yeah. you're just all busy. You're no, just mine's like, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, everyone in the business, traditional business sector. Yeah, well, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. Uh, I think the customer base that we have to appeal to might be uh, uh, more understanding than your customer base some of the time. <laughs> so... Um, but uh, we still have some stuff to talk about, of course, for uh, this podcast. If we didn't, we probably wouldn't be podcasting. But uh, uh, we uh, definitely want to talk about some of the spoilers that have come out. Uh, so the community segment's going to be pretty big. Uh, there's pretty much nothing in the competitive segment. Uh, actually, nothing, because we already talked about Moto Cube, which is ending tomorrow, I believe. So I don't know if you guys actually really want to talk about MTGO Cube, but uh, it's fun. And uh, if you didn't get to do it, then you made a mistake. It's fun. Some people don't like it, and I understand that. Some people don't like not playing the game of Magic, which I can respect. <laughs> yeah, like whenever the card channel is involved, it doesn't lead to really fun. Games. Whenever the card mind twist is involved, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just like, oh, cool. Uh, I played all these. I played all this fast mana, and then you don't have a hand anymore. That's weird. All right, <laughs> I'll just win with whatever. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't actually matter. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it was fun. Um, but it's one of those things that it, it, I'm glad they don't have around all the time because it would get super boring. Yeah, it's good that they do, they do it like once a year. Yeah. So it's fun. yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into the uh, community segment here. Um, you know, we we do have uh, some spoilers to talk about for Aether Revolt. Uh, we have all the inventions. Uh, all of them have been, you know, pushed out. All these inventions. Uh, so this is, of course, the continuation of the masterpiece series uh, for the Kaladesh block, which is the inventions. <laughs> um, and we have we have some great ones. I, I think they've been really, you know, hitting it out of the park with the uh, Kaladesh and. Now to see it continue with Aether Revolt is pretty awesome. Now, to be fair to Wizards, they have a lot of great um, artifacts that they can actually go and print and, and make this you know special treatment to. So, um, uh, are they specific ones that we want to like you know call out and and you know really you know highlight as as far as I, ones that we have? I want to talk about a few just based purely off the art. Um, <laughs> Extra planar lens. <laughs> Uh, oh, you pointed that one out. Actually, it's a sweet, a sweet uh, grindstone is incredible because the way the border works with the actual gold and the and the like the actual stones like is just gorgeous. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge is terrifying because apparently Ensnaring Bridge literally you know before it was flowstone right, which is like the special magical stone that was on what the plane of wrath that could change shapes. Well, here they, it's literally just pincer arms. <laughs> you yeah. can't cross this bridge, you got pincer arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get back. I like how it's like a claw machine yeah. for us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, we got a, we got a Vidalkin. Get back there, Vidalkin. 
Uh, and I want to, mention, want to mention Trinisphere, which, again, just, like, looking at the art on that card is just just gorgeous. Like, I, I if you ever wanted a special Trinisphere, like, like they, I think they did a really good job, like, saying, like, okay, if you only need one of these, like, you're an EDH player, you only need one of these, this is the one you have to have. Like, it, it is it is beautiful. If you haven't seen it, it's three orbs, because Trinisphere. In the Make shape so. of a triangle. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's very clever. Like how how like it all works together and it looks like with again with the border like they really like did a good job with that so and a lot of them look really nice um you know I, I know a couple people like worm coil engine and like platinum angel is interesting as well yeah uh, like I've seen a lot of people compare like the art of platinum platinum angel to the art of Atraxa and how similar they are yeah that's interesting um what else is pretty good here uh, ornithopter oh yeah shout out to ornithopter oh, making the cut <laughs> proud of you buddy uh, I think a lot of people are actually pretty excited about that. Um, it's not it like it, I don't I don't know how expensive it'll actually necessarily be as a masterpiece because obviously it's played in modern uh, in Infinity uh, quite heavily. It's a modern staple, correct? Uh, but you know the card itself is not necessarily very expensive. But this is definitely the uh, high end of high end ornithopters. So uh, can I point out that the flavor text is hilarious for ornithopter too? Consider all confiscated items hostile until proven otherwise. Like, when does it prove otherwise? <laughs> Where's a hat? <laughs> I'm a friend. It puts on a hat and then it gets real angry. <laughs> um, I like to give a shout out to uh, Duplicant. I think that art is sweet. Just like uh, a bunch of like uh, spitting uh, ethereal sort of uh, metal, basically. Um, and then. Uh, Extra planar lens, I think, is pretty cool because if you look at the art, it's the, the plane that is in the lens is definitely Emonquet, yeah. uh, which is uh, a nice touch for for sure. Yeah, like some nice little uh, subtle story hints there, I think. Um, it, so speaking of story hints, you get a planar bridge as one of the <laughs> one of the yeah that's, pieces. That that's, is, a, that's a new card. That is a new Aether card. Revolt. That is, that is from Aether Revolt, um, along with the the other new card, the other new invention, which is Paradox Engine. Um, so let's cover planar planar. Uh, bridge. I almost said planar portal, but you know, no, it's similar, but not exactly <laughs> similar. But no dice. Uh, so planar bridge is a what six mana card, yeah. six yes. mana legendary artifact, and then it has eight and tap. Search your library for a permanent card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. So planar portal lets you just basically demonic to search for any card, put it in your hand. This just lets you get a permanent, put it directly into play. So. A lot of mana, but uh, as we know, there are a lot of big things that you can get <laughs> and put into play. So yeah, no no cast triggers from your Eldrazi if you do this, but you know, paying <laughs> ten mana, you know, pay, paying a, a, maybe a little bit of a uh, uh, discount for yeah. some of them or might be worth it. This is like the this is like the full price Aetherworks Marvel. <laughs> yeah, like you pay fourteen mana. All right, fine, you earned it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the nice thing, I, I don't know if there's a deck in Santa that does this, uh, but like the idea that you could do this like once it's in play, like any any spell in your deck is now an instant is really terrifying. <laughs> like, well, like, any permanent. I'm sorry, any permanent. My apologies, but it still is fairly terrifying. Yeah, it's like give it all your permanents, kind of flashes. Yeah, fairly good. Uncountable flash. It's like, a lot of mana. It's a good oh, type yeah, four I mean, card. Yeah. Type it's, four? Oh, man. It's an unbelievable type four card. Yeah. I think uh, Keller was salivating. Oh, but, probably. Yeah. But this is also like a, a pretty big storyline card, right? Oh, yeah, no. It, we kind of talked it, about it, I think, last uh, time. The flavor text on the on it definitely says it's finished. Like, Tezzer, it's like, it's finished. Now the real work can begin. So, whatever, they're, they're doing whatever they're doing. Yeah, whatever this real work is, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it seems fairly bad for people, more than likely. Man, science is cool. Um, and the the other new uh, uh, masterpiece uh, that we get is Paradox Engine, which is a five mana artifact. It is legendary, and it says uh, whenever you cast a spell, tap. Uh, you may untap all non land permanents. So, you control. You control. Yes, correct. So this works with like artifact mana, like you know signets and stuff like that. Uh, or... It works really, really, really well with uh, Cryptolithrite. In case you were wondering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say mana creatures as well. Well, that but all your creatures all your are creatures. mana creatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen some people start doing... There's also a, a new card we, we haven't talked about yet, uh, but um, let's see if I can find the name of it. Uh, but you guys forgot that uh, Ornithopter's in the set, so that's also technically from Aether Revolt. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ornithopter to get the, a natural Aether Revolt reprint as well. Is it Inspirational Monuments, non-artifact spells you cast have improvised? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So you can just, like... 
<laughs> mm. Like tap all your artifacts and like cast a thing and then untap all your permanents and then tap all your artifacts and yeah, that can get weird. And then of course you have Coach with Right and uh good buddy does Dusk Recruiter right here. I hear they do a good job of getting whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Paradox Engine is definitely one of those cards that's like I don't know exactly what this is going to do yet, but it's probably not going to be good. Yeah. Because it, it, well, it, not 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 good in, in a healthy way for the format. I mean, it yeah. does cost five mana. Yeah, yeah, it does cost five mana, but it it, it definitely reminds me of like Jeskai Ascendancy, but not. Yeah, as... I was just going to say that. Yeah, it's like Jeskai Ascendancy was like a very obvious like combo engine card. Quite literally, it has engine in the name. So, <laughs> um, so that pretty much rounds out all the you know masterpieces that I really wanted to kind of bring up and discuss. Yeah, what else do we have here so far? That's that's kind of worth discussing. You know, I, I want we got to play it close to the vest because you know we do have a Palooza coming. Next yeah, week. that's next week. So I, I don't I don't want to give away too too much. That's a sneaky Palooza. Oh, I'm sorry. We have the Palooza. Who's no, no, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm saying like this has just been a really weird spoiler season because we had the holidays and now it's we usually get like a couple weeks worth of spoilers and now it's just like. Official previews have just started this week, really. I mean, yeah. we got some, you know, prior to the holidays, yeah, but sprinkled throughout. But, but you know, th this is the first week where they've actually, like, you know, every day we're getting new previews, and it's going to be done by the end of the week. So, possibly by the time you even listen to this, the whole spoiler will be out, depending on when you listen to us. Mm -hmm. If you're a real fan, it'd be Wednesday night. <laughs> wow, <laughs> is, is is that the case? That's wow. crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the the pre-releases <laughs> in like ten days or something, right? Yeah. Then yeah. I guess the math checks out. If yeah. that if that's the case. This week, yeah, kind of the spoilers fully uh, out in the week before the pre-release. It, so. it certainly is. But uh, so obviously, just talk about a few cards. Just something that caught your eye that is you know interesting. I mean, at the very least, we have to talk about you know the elephant in the room that that we you know kind of found out about to uh the 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 one black mana kill spell mm. uh, yeah let's talk about fatal push yeah this is sparta yeah <laughs> Cal Caledex, it's it's more of a fatal you. kick really yeah, when you're looking is. at the art yeah i, I hate it doesn't it have this called fatal push and it's a guy getting kicked off of a ship like that it, doesn't... it doesn't really have the same kind of ring though uh, so Fatal Push is a uh, instant uh, that costs a singular black mana. Destroy a target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less. And then Revolt, uh, which is one of our new uh, mechanics. Uh, Revolt essentially is morbid, but it triggers instead of when things die. It's when if any permanent you control left the battlefield. Uh, so Revolt, destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less. Instead, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. So... It, obviously, in standard, we have a lot of easy ways you know to do this. Uh, it does sort of want you to trade in combat more to make these things work. Um, some cards that made sense to me immediately, like PNLR, uh, really easy at getting something to disappear. But clues. But this card definitely has uh, multi-format implications on it because fetch lands trigger revolt, uh, and for that reason, this card is going to see play in modern. Probably, I would have to assume legacy as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, any, any deck that doesn't want to stretch their mana base for, yeah, you know, a lightning bolt-esque effect uh, would probably take a look at this and, and probably want to try and play it. Um, this, this card's powerful uh, when you're looking at formats that have a large amount of creatures that cost two mana or less. Um, and then the flexibility that sometimes this kills things that Bolt can't is pretty relevant <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, cool Siege Rhino, uh, it's dead now. Um... That's like one of the very few like four mana cards that even sees modern play. Well, even beyond that, and Dave, we were talking about this before the cast, but like you mentioned, like infect, right? Bolt can kill their creatures too unless they pump it, and this doesn't care about pump. Mm -mm. Right now, I mean, it still doesn't get around stuff like blossoming defense sure, or whatever, sure, sure. but like mutagenic growth, like you don't have to worry about them possibly having a mutagenic growth to save their creature right. from your, you know, one minute kill spell, so it's just dead. I, I hate to say this, it's really good against Death Shadow. Yeah, super, yeah. super, super good. Yeah, all, I, your, all your threats are uh, you don't have any, you know. Yeah, they're just dead. Yeah, yeah. We we don't even have the full spoiler yet, and I can pretty confidently say this is going to be the most impactful card on mo in modern in the set. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, and unless I'd, like wizards just like is really like has the pedal to the metal with this set. Uh, Shipwreck More. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think. Um, yeah, th this card is going to make it so that if you're playing a, a mid-range deck in modern, you no longer have to play Bolt. 
Um, and Bolt's a great card for controlling, you know, the smaller creatures, you know, things like Delver or Mana Creatures or like Wild Nacatl, things like that. Uh, now, you know, decks like Obzon or Esper can play basically their own version of Bolt. Um, whereas previously they had to rely on Path to Exile, which in the first couple of turns of the game is really doesn't feel good to be casting that. You know, no. giving your opponent the, the land. Yeah. So this, like... I mean, it's even like better than Bolt in a lot of scenarios, where it's like it just always kills a Tarmogoyf. You don't even have to turn on the, the Revolt. You know, you can kill bigger things. Uh, like you said, it's huge Rhino. It comes up from time to time in Modern. Um, yeah. Can't go to the face, but I think a lot of times, unless you're playing Burn, or like, you know, another aggressive red style, like if you're just playing a mid-range deck, I think you'd prefer to have this card just because it has a wider uh, range of creatures that it can kill. So, man. Uh, I think modern is really going to be a lot different with this card in it. So. Yeah, and, and you know, a card like this doesn't you know uh, replace bolt or negate bolt. It does it does things similarly to what lightning bolt does. Mm -hmm. um, and both lightning bolts it, versus this have their you know pros and cons. Um, it, it's not about a card being strictly better or anything like oh, that. Yeah. It, it's about just the flexibility that how you can build decks and having a needing access to that type of card. And now that you have it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Bolt is obviously it's it's at its best when there are smaller creatures to hit with it, and when when the format shifts to more you know maybe more combo or like control, Bolt really isn't that great. Um, so it's kind of gonna. I think I think this card's always gonna be pretty good, but I mean, it's, obviously, there's gonna be some matchups where it's not gonna be great, but there's gonna be the same matchups where Bolt's, Bolt's probably not, not great. that great either. Right. So. But and you know, there there's still decks that that exist that. And I, I, what I, uh, the point I'm trying to say is, I think like uh, I saw uh, Hooglin and uh, Matt Bamante talking about the people kind of over overselling this card, and, and, and um, they, they've made the point that this card isn't going to do anything that you know Path and Bolt already don't uh, already don't similarly do, mm -hmm. um, which I think is similarly you know is somewhat true, is somewhat accurate. Uh, but the reason people are I think should be excited about it is is due to that flexibility. You can kill manlands right without even triggering the revolt. So you just kill yeah. like celestial colonnades. So I mean, this, this yeah, this, this is a pretty pretty long list of cards that this kills that bolt doesn't. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that that's very true. And you know the the ultimate downside of uh, you know uh, the push is can't kill your opponent. Unfortunately. Aww. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't push them off of anything. <laughs> um, but I, I think, like, if, they, if we had to talk about anything on this particular cast, it would probably be that, just because, like, sure. it's the new hotness, as it were. Uh, can I talk about one more card? Yeah. I want to talk about Tezzeret's touch. Oh, yeah, he's he's got the touch. <laughs> he's got the power! Wow! Uh, thank you for that. That was great. You're welcome. Uh, Tezzeret's touch. I have also seen uh, Transformers, the animated <laughs> film. <laughs> Um, there's a great video from the first Transformers movie was coming out uh, that a guy like made a uh, shockwave uh, outfit and it was like, "Hey, we're doing that movie." You got he's like him like doing a training montage to get in shape, <laughs> and like he gets the call where it's like, "Yeah, it's, it's not. We just it, it's it's like the 2000s, man. We don't want like a you know, cassette tape. <laughs> we don't want a boombox." And, and he's just like, "Oh," and then it's just like the most depressing thing. <laughs> Anyways, Tezzeret's Touch is a uh, uh, blue and a black and a generic color, so, so a three, for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact. Enchanted artifact is a creature with pace, uh, base power and toughness 5-5 five, five in addition to his other types. Huh, this sounds like something we've had in standard recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when enchanted artifact is put into a graveyard, return that card to its owner's hand. I think it's interesting because they're trying to push blue black this direction. And I mention this card only because... Um, it's really good with vehicles. Like, it's super good with it's vehicles. It's obscenely good with vehicles. So, it's, as you learned with Tezzeret, Agent of Boss, oh, yeah. in, uh, in Vintage Cube? Yeah, in Vintage Cube. <laughs> By the way, uh, making a uh, Smoker's Copter 5-5, really good. But the nature of uh, these vehicles is they already have their abilities printed on them. So, if you go turn to you know, Heart of Kirin or turn to Smoker's Copter into turn 3 Tezzeret's Touch, you're... You're in business. You got a five-five flyer uh, with either vigilance or that lets you loot, and it's not easy to kill. Now, I, fatal push does kill it, so I'm sorry. Yeah, but like, that's true. so like, if you're then you spend the card, you don't want to get two for one. Well, so say it's your smuggler's copter. Well, then they fatal push it. You just get your smuggler's copter back, which I mean is a mana investment. Don't get me wrong, but it's interesting. And I think that if this you know this 
blue black sort of artifact sub theme. We'll see what other cards it gets gets pushed a little further. I think that's a card that like it leads to some scary draws because you have Ornithopter now in the format, just like you did when you had the blue red deck sort of in standard, and, and you've got you know vehicles which are which are very good. So I, I think this is a card that, like if we're looking for cards that like indicate hey maybe a new archetype can show up in standard, that's the one that says like okay. You know, maybe Artifacts doesn't just have to be, you know, Colossus. You know, maybe it can actually be you know, a little different, doing something a little bit more. You yeah, potentially, them. like, yeah. even aggressive, uh, depending on, on what you're looking at. You right, know? yeah, exactly. So, that's, you know, fairly interesting. Um, I, I think it's also good to point out that um, we do have uh, the, the Expertise cards uh, being a cycle uh, that do, you know, similar things as uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Henny. I want to say, Yeheni's Expertise? Yes, Yeheni. Yeah, that was um, the first one we got. Uh, but then we have uh, two more so far that we've yeah, seen. Yeah, it, it definitely indicates, so we have a legend, and, all, and these, all these cards, you know, all these ones have a legend to go with them, yes. and then their expertise. So it is definitely a cycle. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Sram? S-Ram. 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 Uh, Sram's expertise, uh, which makes it's a sorcery. It's uh, two generic white white, and it's a sorcery that makes three uh, servo tokens, and then you can cast a, a spell with CMC three or less uh, from your hand for free. Uh, the one that is a little bit different is I, I'm going to butcher. I hate these I think cards. It's Rishkar. R- Rishkar. Right? Rishkar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rishkar's expertise, which is uh, four generic green green. And it says, draw cards equal to the uh, greatest power amongst creatures you control. And it says you may uh, cast a, a spell with CMC 5 or less yeah, uh, without paying its mana cost. So that one is a little bit bigger. Yeah, so it seems like... We, so we're missing two at this point, and it seems like you know it's just going to be... You get to cast a card with you know, one mana less than what this card costs. This is right. basically where it's going. And I want to point out... Okay, so like... Saram is a little bit different, but it does seem like they are trying to make these work with their their legend, right? So Yeheni's expertise being the one that the creatures get minus two, minus three, and you get to cast a spell. Well, Yeheni is a two-two for three, and it says whenever a, a, a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni. So like it does seem like it's set up like you play this and then see if you can get it bigger than the expertise, and then you just go you just go ham sandwich. Um, and the same is interesting for Rishkar, which when it co- is a three drop, and when it comes into play, it puts a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and then each creature you control with a counter on it, uh, notice it also says it just has a counter, not a plus one plus one counter, can tap to add mana to your mana pool. So if you play that on three, target two other creatures, and then play your fourth land the next turn, you can ostensibly cast Rishkar's expertise on turn four because of Rishkar. So I do like how these are, like, these are optimal scenarios, don't get me wrong, but I do think it's interesting that they're sort of like, like, pushed that direction a little bit. Uh, Sram's a little different, he does care about artifacts, but not, not so much the servo specifically, so. The thing, uh, Rishkar is pretty cool too, because he doesn't ha- actually have to target other creatures, he could target himself with one of them. Oh, so you only true. need one other creature That's to true. play, which isn't pretty, pretty easy to do in a green deck. Yeah, I think commonly it's going to be a, you know, a, a, a three mana, three, three, and, you know, helps a buddy out. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other thing with uh, Rishkar's expertise that's pretty cool is you get to draw the cards first, so you could draw into something that you could put into play. Right? Because you do it yeah. in that order. Yeah, no, so it, you it, could, like, definitely. you could just play this and, like, have an empty hand, and then be like, oh, just draw into something, play it. Uh, I think they're, I mean, like, obviously getting cast a free spell is powerful. I think, like, Saram, like, the first thing I thought of was, like, wow, so you get three 1-1 one, one, uh, creatures into play, and then you can cast a three CMC. So we're just putting Nissa into play, right? Yeah, correct. And then taking it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, this is the best case scenario, but it's still yeah. interesting. I, I think what you're going to see, um, and, I mean, the, these cards are pretty interesting from a constructed perspective, but e- even, like, in limited, these are the types of cards that, if you're behind on the board, they're going to catch you up pretty pretty quickly. You know, oh, these yeah. are going to create s- swings in the game, and I mean, I, I guess that's that's probably what they're going for with these. You know, um, so I mean, if you're pretty far behind, you can play one of these, get an effect, also play another. You know, you basically, you know, that's one of the, one of the things that we always see in standard is kind of over and over. It's like, okay, who can start casting like two spells per turn right. first? You know what I mean? And this kind of is just a built-in cast two spells per turn. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think even if the effects are not great, like put three servos into play, it's, 
It's okay, but like the fact that they don't fly is kind of lame. Sure. But if you get another spell tacked onto that or get to play another spell for free, then that may push it over the top to where it's playable. Yeah, seven mana's worth of spell for four mana is always yeah. going to be good. Right. So it just how good can it get? Right. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I do want to, you know, uh, warn people that uh, if you think uh, that Rishkar's expertise is, is going into, like, Aetherworks Marvel so someone can draw 13 and play their Rishkana, I don't, I don't see that being a likely case for that card. I'm not saying the card is unplayable in Standard, but I don't think that that's what the Aetherworks decks are really looking, looking to do. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, <laughs> I will say, like, the, the ability... Or, or, like, we've seen cards like this before, where it's, like, draw a card is equal to, like, greatest power on creatures. Yeah. They've all been garbage. Except for the, uh, 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 the one that was tacked onto a Planeswalker, which was awesome. Uh, Garrick Parma Hunter. Green, green, <laughs> Yeah, green that was two. on a Planeswalker. That just yeah, made it was in, great, though. Infinite beast. Yeah, you made a beast, and then you drew three cards. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, and then you played Thragtus the turn after you made Oh, yeah, you drew five cards. Uh, <laughs> like, I missed was, that card so much. <laughs> wasn't there an instant speed one that was like three mana that everybody thought was going to be great? Yeah, I think the, the card is uh, Life's Legacy, which was one in a green, uh, and you sacrifice the creature uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, to uh, draw cards. But typically those effects have been sacrificed, and that's why people probably are higher on this than they have on those types of cards. Um, six mana where, like... So six mana that could, like, draw you, like, two cards. Like, as good maybe. as Garrick was, even? Like, yeah. like, it was... There were so many times where it was, like, too dangerous to just, like, play it minus it, because a removal spell meant your card did nothing. But it's not... So... It's not a target... So, like, even if they no, kill no. a creature, as long as you have another creature in play... It's still, like, it's yeah. not going to be... It's, like, yeah, I'm not saying it's great. I'm just... The 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 effect has not been great no. in, when they printed it in the past, but this again, one may be different because you get a five, free... Again, not, in this case, you're getting 11 mana's worth of right, spell for right. six. Again, yeah, yeah. it's still worth looking at, though. Yeah. Uh, before we're done with this, I do want to mention the, the two the two uh, green belt ch uh, wheel champ. I don't know. There's some sort of tag team duo from Green, green Hat? Uh, you have Green Belt Rampager, which is a 3-4 creature elephant. It costs a green. What? Just a green? That's yeah. crazy. Uh, remember when Wild That's Elephant good. was good? Or no, Rogue Elephant, right? Which yeah, one was it's, better, it's better than Rogue Elephant. Yeah. So this one, when it enters the battlefield, pay two energy. If you can't, return it to your hand and get an energy. So like this is like your turn one play that isn't really a turn one play. Right? You're just like, play it on turn one and then get it back. Um, and I was like, man, it's cool. And you could definitely go like, you know, like... Um, Play it on turn two. Well, you, yeah, yeah, there's multiple ways to play it on turn two. Oh wait, no, you can't. Well, yeah, you, you, can. you play the, the search for a mana uh, yeah. creature. Oh, yeah. You play the lay of the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, or uh, what? Thriving turtle. Uh, that's possible too. <laughs> uh, but then I w looked at like Greenwell Liberator, which is a green and a colorless for a two-one uh, elf warrior, uh, or green and generic. My apologies. Um, it has revolt on it, and if so, as long as another permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. So two mana four three, and I'm like, man, how does that work? Oh, you play your elephant and then bounce it, and then play this, and then the next turn you can probably play your elephant and keep it, and you've got a lot of power on the battlefield. Yeah, really yeah, quickly. Seven power at turn three. <laughs> like, I, and I I don't know if there's the other cards in the format for Green Stompy oh, to be four. there. But I remember, you know, we already have, you know, a, an energy deck that, like, you know, is a combo deck. But, like, when you look at Stompy, like, you have to look at some of the other cards. But having, you know, Blossoming Defense plus these efficient creatures, man, it makes you I, think. It's been, it's been a long time since I, like, I I've even like, heard Stompy as, I think like, a thing. Kibler's, uh, like, f uh, Flint Hoof board deck was the last time I heard somebody call a deck Stompy. yeah. <laughs> if you're not familiar with that with that terminology, that's just a green aggressive deck. It's yeah. basically just all creatures and like pump spells. So I remember getting uh, like how I got a, like how I came to know that term was that they used to release Pro Tour decks, but like as proxies. You may have seen them. They're gold. Yeah, the border. gold border. Yeah. Uh, and definitely, my brother and I had a copy of the 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 green one. So it was like pouncing jaguars and albino trolls and rancor, and it was it's, like yeah, stompy. All right, yeah, I like yeah. this and do it. Uh, Wild hounds and stuff. Like, yeah, like wild wild dogs. Wild dogs. It was just yeah. wild dogs. <laughs> like symbiosis and stuff, right? Yeah, oh yeah. That, to, yeah. Deck was sweet. The, so th these are all creatures that, like, by today's standards, are garbage. But like <laughs> back in the day, they were like super efficient. You know, Gaz I think Albino Troll would still be good. Gazban Ogre, one mana, two yeah, two. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, no. <laughs> it was played at one point, but, um, but. Yeah, so it's been a very long time since that was like an actual viable strategy. And just seeing these, and, and even going further, I think Greenwheel Liberator, I, I mentioned you know, to Dave, I, 
I think it has, it's definitely not Fatal Push, but it has modern implications. I mean, t two mana 4 threes, yes, it dies the Bolt, but, I mean, it's going to die to Fatal Push too, so who cares. But like, two mana 4 threes, when, especially when there's a number of decks in modern that are trying to play turn two uh, locks on Smiters, well, it seems like essentially having, you know, more copies of locks on Smiter on turn two seem, might be what you want to do, so. Yeah, and you're talking about like a, like a Naya Zoo deck that's going to have a lot of fetches anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought about that. I, I don't know. I see where you went with this, and that's kind of what I thought at first, too. But I'm like, in modern, like, if you're playing, like, that style of deck, like, if you're playing, like, a zoo deck, like, two mana is actually a lot. <laughs> like, you're not, you're not if, wrong. If you're playing, but... like, Death Shadow, like, that deck doesn't even... Like, it, it started to play Tarmogoyf. Totally it's a different deck than, like, it is a, it is like a different Knight deck. of the Reliquary style zoo. Or sure. Like, like I'm, not, I'm not talking about, like, Death Shadow or, like, the red-green, like, Burning Tree deck. I, I don't... Uh, you, theoretically, you could play you, this you card could. in the red-green deck. It, it, yeah. it would have to play a lot more fetches than I think it was before, but you certainly could, because you could Burning Tree into this, and that's, that's certainly not bad. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty gross. But I think people, <laughs> I think people will experiment with it, because, it, I mean, full yeah. power on turn two with no real drawback is pretty good. Sure. I'm just saying, like... We already have Tom Rogoyf, which is often like two mana three four. You're right. I all I'll say is this: this is going to cost you a dollar. <laughs> Fact. And I think yes. there's, a, there's a whole subset of player that like 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 I played red green aggro for a long time because I couldn't afford Goyfs, and it's average in that deck. Sure. I'll play this card over it, and it will do most most of the time. It will do the same thing for me. So I think there's a, again, I think there's a large group of players who are looking at this card. They'll be happy for it, and they'll play it modern. Here you go. You ready? Yeah. Turns on team or battle rage by itself. It, so, Boom. Sold. I, I trust me. I thought about that already. <laughs> so done. Yeah, um, you want to have a, a a deck that loses a lot of permanents. Yeah. It's definitely Death Shadow, it man. It certainly is. Sweet Mistress Bobbles. They're gonna go away. <laughs> and like like people are playing Goyf in that deck, but that deck also wants to delve its entire graveyard away multiple times. Yeah. So mm, interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Broke it. Uh, anyways, no, I think actually one of the reasons you play Goyf is because it doesn't die the bolt, but <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that that might. Yeah, the the new dies to bold is going to be the new is going to well, be dies to but fatal then, push. But like, then to be fair, that's the same reason you were playing hooting mandrills before. Yeah. So and hey, you know, that doesn't die to fatal it push. It doesn't die to fatal not push even, or not bold. even. Yeah. yeah. Tassiger. Oh man, Tassiger is going to be. Who are you? <laughs> hooting mandrills. The new the new supreme leader of uh, unkillable mandrils, creatures. Uh, it's, it's probably just Tassiger, right? <laughs> like Tassiger was already great. Yeah, just but Tassiger is like the legendary goyf. So he's the king goyf. He's got a crown, yeah. or he is a necklace. It's one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think uh, that's that's pretty much everything that we uh, wanted to cover. Yeah, just this is smattering, just a little taste. We got the Palooza next week, and um, yeah, yeah, Palooza next week for a more extended, uh, you know, coverage of. Were there any mechanics we didn't hit upon? We we talked about. I mean, we we talked about um, revolt, revolt. We talk, and then before, what two weeks ago we we had the spoiled card that had, um, yo, I'm gonna th inspiration. No, it, is it not inspiration? In, inspiration is not. No, no, example. no. Improvisation. Yeah, imp yeah. Improvise. Improvise. <laughs> Improvisation. We're, we're good at this. Uh, we talked about that before, which is you know essentially you being able convoke to for yeah, convoke for artifacts. Convoke for artifacts. Um, and I think it was it for new mechanics, right? Um, I think so. We have energy. I, I know the mechanics article was actually like super short. Yeah. And energy is definitely you know still a thing, which you know if you I know that like, before like when we look at like. Um, uh, like Zendikar, for example, we only had like colorless deck mana for one set. I I felt like energy was too big for them to just be like, oh well, we'll only have it in Kaladesh. But now yeah. the revolt is on, so they don't have any energy because the consulate took all of it. Tezzeret's really hungry. <laughs> I'm just double checking the uh, the page here, but I think that is it. Yeah, just two new mechanics, which is fine. That's good. I, I'm actually like yeah, that. totally fine with it. They got to slow down the mechanics, anyway. It's, yeah, it's very true. It feels um, like a lot. It does mean that I, I guess we don't. Are we aren't going to see um, the fabricate come back in this set? No, no, we'll not. That's kind of sad. Yeah, well, again, the inventors have been put on lockdown, so they can't be fabricating things. That's true. And they, they, we've seen some cards that actually do make server tokens anyway. Sure. I, I think the thing that I'm most excited about in this set is, like, instead of trying to, like, throw another mechanic in, if, when we can do this full set review, we'll talk about this more, but there's a number of cards that really use energy in a unique way. I mentioned yeah. the elephant already, but there's a couple, like, like so, like, now the energy is a thing, play with energy. So. Yeah. No, I think it's good, and it's it, it makes it seem like it might be a little bit more pushed to have some diversity within constructed. Right. So that's good. So speaking of constructed, um, 
we do have some information about one of the bigger constructed, you know, teams, or I guess teams. Uh, Team Card Hoarder has been uh, seemingly going through some some changes behind the scenes. We've had uh, some recent instances of people uh, leaving the the team. So we had Chris Anderson uh, having a Facebook post saying that he was leaving the team in, in order to uh, try and pursue a, potentially a, a career in um, game development. Um, so. Hats off to him. You know, hopefully he uh, gets to where he wants to be going within the, uh, you know, many layered uh, community that is the gaming community. Um, and we've seen that. We've seen tons of players leave and actually go develop games. I mean, some of the most notable names are, are doing that actively. Um, so it's not very surprising. And it's a, natu- a fairly natural transition, um, uh, especially if, you know, I think on, on t- uh, Team Card Hoarder, he has uh, uh, been a mentor. Um, he said that one of his. Um, he, uh, he was if he wants to like combine education with it. Yes, sure. exactly. So uh, that was one, sort of one of one of his motivations. But motivations. But uh, we also had uh, our, our our friend of the show Clay uh, be uh, removed uh, from the team, um, uh, saying that they were kind of going separate. Team Hard Car Order kind of going a diff- taking a different way, uh, and w- he was uh, not invited to to come along basically. But um, seemed like it was still an, an, an amicable split um, from what we could, you know, read into Clay's post on Facebook. And then we uh, learned today, uh, or last night, I don't know, you said the, the Facebook message at like 7 o'clock in the morning or something uh, like that. Sorry, something to be... Uh, so, I uh, saw so CVM uh, also saying that like his his um, like scheduling didn't line up as he worded it with what Card Hoarder wants to do. I, I Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to talk about this just because they don't have a full announcement yet. And, like, looking at the Card Hoarder, like, roster on their website still, still lists, like, Chris Anderson as the team captain. uh, And uh, these other members still here. So I'm assuming we'll get an actual announcement from Card Hoarder. But it will be interesting to see, like, how they restructure. Is this in response to Star City cutting the player of the year race? Or, you know, as far as, like, the actual, like, players championship. Um, You know, because they, you know, they have been the most visible team. Now, you know... Uh, obviously, um, I'm going to lose yellow yellow name. Meta, meta Thank gurus. you. I don't know why. It just like literally had in my head. And just no, like, they're literally the most visible because they, their their <laughs> well, shirts glow so in the dark. I so. think like overall, they still have had the most like at least throughout the their their first year of run had like a lot of success. But because of the numbers of Team Card Hoarder, like I said, like yo. Uh, yo, SCG Indie, yo, was the perfect example right after Kaladesh. You know what I mean? Like. You know, as I was fighting through the top eight, the last few rounds, it was just card hoarder jerseys everywhere. Yeah, and then yeah. three or four of them top eight at that event, you know, including Jacob Bao, you know what I mean? So, uh, and, and CVM for that matter. But so, and they, just look at the Invitational. You had two members of their team top eight, the most recent Invitational, and had them win it. Uh, so it seems, it, it, I'll be interested to see what this restructure is when, by every metric you could look at, you had a lot of success as a team. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, maybe it is just people, you know, either, like, you know, uh, seemingly the, the, the Carter had a team A and team B, so maybe it's just cutting the B squad. Um, nope. Maybe it is, <laughs> well... CBM and, and, and Cranderson were both prime. Sure, but uh, maybe in that turn, maybe they are just telling us the, the, the truth of being completely transparent, and saying, like, I want to do this with my time, or I can't do this with the schedule, you know? And if that's just the case, that's just the case, you know? We all know we're all human and we have conflicts, and sometimes those conflicts prevent us from doing things that we would otherwise do. So maybe that's the case, and maybe there isn't anything. But, um, you know, anytime there's movements and shifts like this is something new, I think it's important to take a look at and, you know, be aware of. Um, because, you know, the, the concept of, of teams in in Magic, at least at this, uh, you know, esports esque level, is still relatively new, I would say. And uh, maybe everyone's just trying to figure it out a little bit better, which makes sense to me. I take, but <laughs> what I take out of this is I'll see less card hoarder shirts at big tournaments. <laughs> Theoretically, basically, yeah. yes. sure. But I just, I don't know, I'm interested to see what their reasoning for it is because if it's in response to SCG, I mean, I really think that like. I, I yeah, can't. They, I can't extrapolate the they, full meaning of this, but Wizards needs to pay attention they, to these things. They might be the first of many teams to kind of well, trim it down. You think? If if a very successful team on the second most successful and the only other actual Magic tournament series outside of you know Wizards itself, right? Within the time frame of one year, where they have all the success, 
feels like it must get smaller because of the, the player base or you know, because of the visibility of it, right? And that's literally happening before Wizards has a pro tour with actual teams, right? Then Wizards may be missing the boat on something they're not paying attention to. So I, 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 this is major extrapolation, but I think it's worth considering. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Um, I think it's you know it for the uh, community, and like I said, we really don't have anything for uh, competitive. So uh, before we get to the question of the week, I did want to give a quick uh, shout out to our sponsor, uh, the lovely and wonderful Comic Town. Um, the uh, Aether Revolt pre-releases are, as we discussed, just uh, literally around the corner, and um, of course, Comic Town will be hosting a litany of events. Uh, uh, you know, spanning from you know midnight on the fourteenth um, all the way through uh, the fifteenth. Um, so there will be, I believe, five, um, uh, six events, excuse me, um, uh, that will all be traditional sealed events, um, and, uh, cool. there will be actually a two-headed giant, uh, flight on Saturday at 5 p.m. if that's, uh, you know, uh, more of your, your style as far as that goes. And, um, there's a gauntlet that you can even run, so if that's something you want to do and be a complete degenerate, if you run five of these six uh, events, you are eligible to get uh, additional prizes for running the gauntlet. And they really do have fun putting those prize packs together. Oh, for for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, very much so a, a fun time coming up uh, at Comic Town. Yeah, one thing they're doing differently this time than they have in the past is they've had capped events uh, before, so maybe like... 32 person flights or you know 64 person flights and then it being capped um the events that they're running for this particular pre-release are technically uncapped though they do have to there is a some number that they can get to where it's literally they literally don't have enough space in, yeah. in the store but it's something like 120 or something like that right 40 Okay. Yeah, yeah, 140. So literally capped by size of store, yeah, not right, actual yeah, yeah, capped events. Yeah, so. not not just you know capped at 32 players. Yeah. Um, so that that's pretty cool. I think um, a lot of people wanted that, and um, you know people didn't want to be left out, and and they wanted to be able to play when they wanted to play. I know myself. You know, I may not have the entire day to uh, you know go do pre-release, but I might be able to go in the morning and play and you know one do that. So it's nice to have that extra flexibility. Yeah. 100%. So uh, if you want to learn more about the events they're going to be having, you can uh, check out the events uh, on their uh, website, which is just www.worldofcomictown.com, or by going to Facebook and doing a quick search for Comic Town Gaming Center. Um, so again, no competitive. If you didn't play the cube, sucks to be you, <laughs> quite literally. There were a lot of... Uh... There weren't any competitive events, but there were a lot of people streaming. You had uh, Johnny Magic and... Yeah, tons. Yeah, Owen Turnwald was streaming Cube, a lot. Vintage Cube brings out all the people, yeah. so... Tom Martell was streaming a lot. Boys to the yard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Milkshake is better than and, yours. Oh, their drafting skills are definitely better than yours. Yeah. I, can't, I can't draft Storm in that cube. Well, so. see, here's the trick. Uh, you take fast mana. Shocking. No, I'm saying I can play in the cube. I'm saying I can't draft Storm in that cube. Yeah, right, right. Fast mana and draw sevens. Yeah, yeah. It, the, yeah, the general strategy is... Uh, is there a power card in this pack? No. Okay. Is there a signet? Yes. All right. It's probably the signet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then if there's no power, no signet, is there fast mana? If there's not, it, then is there any other broken there, cards? Is there a card draw spell? Like yeah. Compulsive research. Okay. Mall drifter, sure. Yeah. Because those draw you into the broken cards. It's basically it. Mm -hmm. If you're drafting swords, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> unless, Sorry. unless you're like forcing white weenie. No. <laughs> not even then. Not even then. No. Too slow. At least not first pick. I mean, you could get them. The, the yeah, swords, swords go, wheel. Yeah. Swords go late. Yeah, but you should, obviously. Uh, all, should all, honestly, you, you shouldn't be playing swords because that means you're playing creatures and Aww. you're doing it wrong again. Unless you're <laughs> white weenie. Uh, I did draft that once. Yeah, but it, it's, it's didn't, it didn't feel good. Out of the aggressive archetypes, like that's probably the best one. Let me just tell you, I drafted a white weenie deck. And I had Black Lotus. The best thing I could do was like turn one Flicker Wisp. <laughs> I went, no, I went turn one Kithian, Black Lotus, Flicker Wisp, go. I lost that game. <laughs> good job. It's, it's not good. Um, so, it, it, you know, uh, that's pretty much it for our competitive segment. You're welcome. Uh, we uh, clearly taught you how to draft Vintage yeah. Cube like a master. Um, you can use that. Next next year. Next year, yeah. Remember, yeah. just keep this episode, keep it bookmarked. Come back to it next year. Y'all be good. Um, 
let's talk about what what you know this the glut of this podcast will likely be uh which is i think something we've been uh, had the 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 luxury of avoiding for a while but it seems to be persisting and uh so we must uh discuss it and that is frontier uh frontier if you don't know about it have been living under a rock since you know uh, the end of 2016 into 2017 is a new homegrown, well, I guess uh, Japanese grown to be completely uh, I mean, correct. Some people's home. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Can I, can I just say living under a rock? It wasn't the worst idea the way 2016 was going. Fact, I, I think that was like I, the same place to be, actually. Uh, actually, all. the rent for rocks went up from last yeah, year. Yeah, so it's true. It's awkward. Very hot, a hot commodity. Well, these hot days. rocks have always been. <laughs> 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 um. So Frontier is uh, a uh, player-created format uh, that is only for cards, uh, M15, uh, sets M15 going forward. So with the hollow foil stamp on the rares and mythic rares going forward. So it's actually, so it's M15, Magic Origins, Cons of Takir, Block. Uh, yeah, Fate Reforged, Dragons, yes. and then forward. Yeah. Well, that's what Block meant. Yeah, yeah. Shadows, yeah. Block, and then... Kaladesh yeah. block, uh, ostensibly. And, and all and, blocks and, going forward. Yeah, and Zendikar. And, until Frontier yeah. dies in three months. <laughs> yeah, so... Eh, don't so, be so confident. But, so, uh, I, I, I was just saying that for yeah. joke's sake. I don't know if I'm confident or not. I have, I have no confidence in the format. If I want, if I want to start it, anywhere, it's there. I, I, I feel like there's a, there's a divide in the Magic community when it comes to Frontier. For a lot of different reasons, actually. Not just, you know... I think there's a lot of people that... They just don't like the format itself, and then a lot of, um, I think some other people just don't like the implications that it's having on card prices. <laughs> so let, let's start. Let's start with like a coda on on the format, and you talk about the, the divisiveness. Here's the divisiveness. Um, we can argue over what the basic idea behind it was, right? Uh, some have argued that um, you because know, it was started in Japan. Uh, was it Hyrule? Yeah. Yes. Uh, though, so some argued that like Hyrule uh, literally did this just because they needed to sell cards that they had way too much stock on. Uh, others also argued though that certain modern staples are even harder to get in Japan. So creating a local format that wasn't modern was also beneficial. And there's one thing you could say about the Japanese Magic community: they play Magic all the time. Like, yes. All the time, events fire constantly. So having a new format there, you know, that fit in the middle, it seemed interesting. Uh, obviously, whenever you have a new format, uh, it tends to catch fire pretty quickly. Uh, we can look back at some ones recently. You know, some that stick, and you know, you have things like Commander, which is now supported by Wizards, and some things like Tiny Leaders, which all of us at this table all built decks for, had some fun with, and then the format disappeared almost instantly. Yeah. Um, you, you, you have just have a chance of asking someone about Tiny Leaders for them to either laugh about it or them to not know what it is. And it was less than two years ago. Uh, so, uh, as far as the divisiveness, people originally seemed to latch on because, oh, cool, it's, it's modern but cheaper, right? We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people also latched on because it, it's cards that a lot of players in recent sets have already had. They've been upset with Standard in the last few blocks. However... They have all their cards from Kaladesh, etc., or from from cons, etc. Now they get to play them again. Yay! Um, but for a lot of people, those standard formats haven't been that exciting. And if you actually start looking at like results from um, you know, Frontier, you start to see it, it looks a lot like what Extended used to look like. Uh, you have a lot of boogeymen. You have you know, people say the format's wide open, but you have Bant Company, you have Rally of the Ancestors, you have Siege Rhino Abzan. You have a Tarka Red. Uh, you know, so these, if you, were, if you were missing these decks and nostalgic for something that happened two years ago, stop it. You're what's wrong with society. We can't be nostalgic for things that haven't left us yet. That's just a personal outtake on nostalgia in general. Uh, but some of you really liked it. So that's where I think where the divisive comes from. You know, like people like, there are people who are just derisive in general because the format is literally made up you know, it feels like yeah. the whose line is it anyway is not, of like not, formats. Yeah, the format's not, made up and the decks don't matter, right? Uh, and then there's some people who like the concept of any new format really excites them. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely in the derisive camp. So I haven't played a game of Frontier, so we'll just preface Most that. Most people haven't. Right. Half the people but, who have said in like an online comments who say like I play this all the time, you're not actually no. playing Frontier. Okay, well I'm not I'm not trying to pretend. I know. Uh, well, I guess like I did play Frontier like a couple years ago yeah, with a when, con standard. Yeah, so yeah I, I was playing Just Guy Black in a tournament. Yeah, I did as yeah. well. Uh, <laughs> 
No, I, I, I'm actually, I'm interested in this, and I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that it continues to pick up steam. Um, You're hopeful it continues. To pick I'm, up steam. I'm hopeful. I, I've not been happy with standard. I don't think that's any. But you love modern. I do love modern, and I'll continue to play modern. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not really happy with standard right now, and I think like personally, like I would rather play frontier than current standard just because i think i think there is some room for innovation now if it does if it does become an official format it could get solved real quick so i mean no it would be solved very I, quick like i i definitively would be solved very quick because the the card memory already exists but people already know what's good in that format like when well, you're not finding a lot of diamonds in the rough your argument going forward is then that you know hopefully the cards in kaladesh are what open up new things sure but literally you're talking about a a set that ostensibly only has one more block than the largest standard did and because right. of how long dragons was in it doesn't even feel like those cards were different for i'm very sorry my wife is definitely using the microwave so i apologize <laughs> for the um but like you have like you're talking about cards that did get to play together like so when you talk about room for innovation i don't see it i don't see well i, I don't see what you're doing in the format you, that seems new and fresh okay all right you definitely have a point um but I think with with, with it how, being a non points and they're going to raise no. the cloth, so <laughs> <laughs> with it uh, being a non rotating format, it's obviously just going to keep continue continuing to grow as we've seen with modern over the years, and I think that it, yeah, it may not be that robust right now because we don't have that many blocks in it, but it is something that's going to continue to grow, and I think it could turn into something pretty interesting. I mean, uh, a lot of people's issue with modern is that it's too fast. You have you know, free mana, and you have, um, you know, turn three kills and infect and all that stuff. Well, it's like you don't have any of that stuff in Frontier. No, and you have could... all of the worst interaction that Standard's offered us for the last two years. You have decks that are so mid-range or combo because they can do whatever they want because you can't pressure your opponent fundamentally outside of a target red. Right, but, like, we, we talked about how Standard right now, I guess one of the, one of the big issues with Standard is that we don't have the proper answer cards to fight against some of the more oppressive decks. And I think with Frontier, I mean, you have a larger card pool, card pool and I think the answers are there for the big decks. I don't think you're going to see one deck just, you know, fully dominate. What Graveyard Hate do you have? You have Tormod Script. You have Tormod Script. It's not nothing. Sweet we didn't have Tormod. Sign we didn't, me up. Dave just convinced hey, me. We didn't have Tormod Script when Rally was uh, running right. Buck and Standard. We didn't. I mean, maybe if we did, it would have been different. Maybe. Maybe. Would you like Tormod Script and Standard right now? I maybe. Yeah. Would maybe. I want, would I ever want to cast the card? No. No. You wouldn't be happy about it's it, but at least card. it's something, though. I, but you're arguing. So like, I, and maybe maybe I'm because I'm definitely biased. But like hearing yeah. that, like, well, it's something that doesn't sound like a format that's worth playing to me. Well, there's something. Okay, so like, great. if they print like. A decent graveyard hoser in the next set. Then does that just completely turn the format around for you? You're just like, oh, no, of course sweet not, now. because okay. you don't like. So here's, if you haven't liked standard for the last year and a half, how in the world does Frontier sound exciting? You just said you haven't liked the but last two standards, but, but, but Frontier sounds good. No, I, I don't like current standard. Okay. I liked con standard. So that's why you like Frontier, because that that literally people I've talked to they like Con Standard, and that's why they like Frontier, which in and of itself is also a lie, because half I, the people who said they like Con Standard did nothing but complain about Con Standard because fetches were expensive, but now they yeah. cost they're the same price they were in Standard, and now they're affordable, and I don't understand the difference. But, but I, Morgan I, hasn't I, talked at all. I feel like we're bogarting this. Yeah. So, um, uh, I I'm not very high on the format. I I that's you what know. I wanted him to talk. I, uh, I I think that it is um, it is something. It is an idea. Like it, it, it you know, it's not saying that it's it's a bad idea, but it's um, something that I think is a little bit too soon for its own good. If too that soon. makes any sense. Um, and I don't think it's diverse enough. I don't think it's big enough for it to be really relevant in any way, shape, or form. Um, also, the idea that this format would ever be enacted without some sort of ban list is ludicrous to me. Uh, it, but, it, it, what would you ban? Jace. I, the, uh, I, I, I don't even think you would necessarily ban Jace, but you definitely ban, like, I don't know, the cards that uh, you can't play anywhere else. Like, you ban, like, Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. Like, cards that are too good for uh, modern and too good... Uh, they're banned in... Uh, what, what can they be played in? Can they be played they in Legacy? Play, they, they are restricted in, in Vintage, correct? I know Dig yeah. is restricted. Yeah. 
So, Treasure Cruise is restricted. Yeah, there you go. So you can I mean, play it. In the, yeah, but oh. those cards weren't those cards weren't busted when they were in standard. They were good, but they weren't. Mm, they were pretty close, but but see that no, don't do that because and every time the card pool yeah, gets bigger, it's going to be better in this format for sure. No, they're going to get banned because the card pool is going to get bigger and they're that, too good. They've shown themselves well, to be too I, good I, and I bigger. Mentioned, for I mentioned Jace because that's the choke point for at least three, if not four, tier one strategies. Yeah, we Sh- talked about the financial implications. Yeah. So what's Jace sure. up to now? Uh, he's almost fifty dollars. He's forty five right now. And it was down to what, like twenty ish. So it was still twenty five. Like, if you want to be like, it was still holding you know. decent value. I mean, most cards don't it, maintain it that so value after they play in modern. And that was that was why and it was uh, and vintage. And vintage. Uh, uh, Legacy I didn't see as much. Mainly saw it in modern and vintage. Uh, there was uh, there were a number of like, the Grixis decks were sort of showing up. That were the few and far between, but like the Cabal Therapy style decks had some. Good. Whatever, neither here nor there. Sure, uh, but it wasn't seeing a lot. Like Grixis control is not lighting no. up the modern format. Grixis in Legacy, uh, where is isn't Delver? <laughs> Despite is, what Jerry T wants it to be, uh, is not again lighting up the format. You know, this card is hard to reprint, and it is a mythic rare. Uh, you know, which makes sense if it is seeing play in in a format. Um, then yeah, it's going to hold uh, some amount of value due to price memory. Um, and due to playability. Now, if you look at the actual like chart, it is it was like going down in price and, and you know hitting twenty, um, and then Frontier got a whole lot of buzz and it doubled or plus in price. Um, and you can look at other trajectory trajectories of highly played cards in other standards that have rotated out. Uh, usually, they take if they are you know start to get played again years to recover their price to to start going back up not you know months after rotation theoretically i i think you so morgan and i've actually debated the the buying in the frontier thing a bunch and have different opinions on it despite both being fairly negative on the format uh, i i will say though that like re, you know regardless of your thoughts on the format and your thoughts of buying things like if you are excited about frontier you have to recognize them no matter how excited you are, you can't be deluded enough to think that Jace has gone up because of excitement for Frontier. Because there's a, the average Magic player, if you went and just asked on the street, still doesn't know that that's a thing that has ever existed. Right? Speculators are causing Jace to go up. Correct. And Jace has a $100 price memory. So you're talking about a format where like half the reason you wanted it started is because, like, oh, it's so much cheaper than modern. Unless, of course, you want to play Rally or Bant Company or Jeskai Black or it, you blank or you know, like it, like then well yeah and you could just not play it sure but then it's just like modern right like then you could just like not be playing a real deck so uh you when i say it could get banned i think like, as a choke point it might be banned so it just banned for price reasons I, it feels like that's the reason jace is still banned in modern um different jace yeah mine's culter not <laughs> friend's prodigy um I, I, I agree i agree that the reason why some of these you know quote unquote frontier staples have you know, doubled, tripled in price uh, is due to people buying out stock of, of these cards and preying on people's fear that they will not be able to buy these cards at a cheaper price at a later date. So they're, they, these speculators are doing what speculators have always done in Magic is buy out stock, jack up the price, and take and prey upon people. And uh, I just, I, I hate that that is a part of the game that it just seems to be, uh, you know... Uh, something that we roll over for. I so this is this is the argument that we've had twice now, and I I don't know how much I want to do this. I will say, you're you're just condemning like capitalism, and that's fine. You can hate capitalism, and, you know, be a communist and whatever. But I know, but all seriously, you're just you're, you're talking about like that's the point of this game, and you've taken advantage of that system multiple times, and have never once been upset about it. You've watched us take advantage of that system multiple times and have never said, hey, maybe you shouldn't buy X copies of this, or maybe you shouldn't get it for this price, or maybe you shouldn't do this you know, to hold it for this reason. You've never been upset about it until Frontier. So I still think that your, your being upset about it is Frontier and not the actual practice of speculating on Magic cards. I, I still think it's an overall like negative practice, and sure, we, we've had, we, we've uh, at times uh, purchased, like, we've pre-ordered cards, for sure, and I know that you have bought cards in bulk uh, in a speculative way. And that you snipe foils on eBay, hoping to make money off of them. You've done it multiple times. Well, I can get it for sure. this price, and if they go up, I made money. But you didn't want foils. Aren't you stealing those from the people who wanted the foils? Uh, theoretically. But, um, I mean, I suppose that you could... Uh, 
but I'm not like buying all the foils. I'm not like buying enough to cause the price to to increase. I'm I'm buying something to theoretically protect myself if I you know did want to buy a foil at a price, and then if it does go up, to profit on it if I wanted to sell it. I'm not buying every foil on eBay to cause well, the price no, hike. There's there's a difference for sure, but I th- again I think the practice has been like I th- I think that's a separate conversation. Maybe. Yeah, if, yeah. There's a difference between buying a card at a, a great price and buying fifty of a card and buying out a card at a great price. Sure, and then it's up to the player base to not buy it. You know what I mean? Sure. And that includes you. But then it's also up to the player base not to play what they want to. Yeah, so what we're telling you is that you it is your duty to not play Frontier. It's the, for the best. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um, no, it, I, I, so I, I do think that the aberrational price bikes is not something that is natural. I think it is something that is driven by people's interest in Frontier. Um, and uh, I think that uh, I want to warn players not to buy into that. That this is not something that that we we you know should be endorsing in any way, shape, or form. If you want to play this format, proxy it with your friends. Um, if you are you know playing at a store that requires you to have these real paper cards, then that doesn't make any sense. You know this is you know not a sanctioned format. Like this is no ban modern. Like like <laughs> come on, let's be real here. Uh, you know if it's something that you want to play, play it with your friends and play it. You know get your local store rallied behind it and organize something to do inside of the store. Rally. Don't really? yeah. Don't. <laughs> Don't you know fall into this trap? You know, I I, again, I still disagree. If, if you want to buy four copies of Rally of the Ancestors because you want to play them in the future, then it's no right. different than if you. It's it's literally no different than if they were spoiled a card right now from Kaladesh and you went, hmm, you know what? That makes me think of Rally of the Ancestors for Modern. I might buy four copies of it right now. It is literally no difference. And, and, it, it, the speculator is the difference, and and it's up to players to be diligent and looking and saying, okay, I I'm not going to buy into this, right? And you know what? You probably, you know, if if you want to be for the good of the community, you probably shouldn't sell into it either. But as a as an American, I'm not going to tell you to do that. Morgan might tell you otherwise. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, if you do this, then you're going to play. You're going to pay more. Than, oh more no, than. no. So that's the one thing. So players who wanted mo- or like, so that, I guess that's the point. I will agree totally with you on people who want to play Frontier because it's going to be cheap. Recognize it won't be. It may be yeah. cheaper than modern. Right for some amount of time, but you have obvious choke points in a format that if you if it becomes a real format, you'll be just as upset very soon. Now, one thing I just want to touch on because Morgan mentioned the the fear that people have. I don't think we re- I don't think we really really expanded on that. That's um, a good point though. And, and what what we're talking about is in in modern's only been a format for what five six years it was uh first in 2011 is when it first debuted okay so this would be the sixth sixth year we saw with modern when that was announced as a format or that became a format you saw a lot of the staples kind of explode in price um and i think a lot of people are thinking that the same thing could happen if Frontier ever gets announced as a format so yeah people don't want to miss the boat i mean yeah you want to yeah you don't you don't want to miss the boat now I've uh, purchased some cards that I may play in, in Frontier, I'm not going to lie. But I actually own probably 90% of the staples, right? I have all the cons block cards, you know? So I still just have those. Um, I had sold my Goblin Rabble Masters when they were about to rotate out. So I picked up a, a play set of Goblin Rabble Masters because that was the, you know, one of the few actual staples of the format that I didn't own. I got it. was like, I spent like $12 in store credit. At Comic Town to get those. So it's like, okay, I'm not I'm not gonna be that upset if it doesn't ever, ever become a thing. But if it does, I'm gonna be happy that I got them at that price than having to pay, God knows what. Um, so I don't know. I'm not gonna like go buy up like 50 Goblin Rabble Masters hoping that it's you know gonna right. become a format. But I'll just get a playset for myself and you know. But that but like that's what people have done mm-hmm. due to this being a thing due to frontier like gaining so much popularity in steam right and it's unfairly inflating the cards the, the prices of these cards and when three months down the road when we get modern matches 2017 and no one's talking about frontier and everyone's talking about modern and these card prices theoretically go down on certain cards people are uh, i will feel sorry for the people that got burned by this yeah, I think at the end of the day, like, so I, I'm not against, like, a grassroots, like, format. Like, again, I, I embraced Tiny Leaders. It was fun, but there were flaws with it. And, like, even if you're the biggest Frontier bandwagon person, you have to understand that there are severe flaws with this. And the first most is there is no reason for Wizards to support this. 
None. Actual zero. Like, Modern continues to grow player base wise. Look, look at Modern GPs and Open versus Standard GPs and Open. Modern is quickly becoming more popular, right? Now, it depends on the standard format at the time, right? But Modern GPs are closing in like, like closer to 1,500 to 2K averages, right? Like, they're big spectacles. Yeah. Frontier doesn't make them any money. Ma master sets can't print from these sets yet. Like, there's nothing about this that makes sense for them to support. So you're going to have a hard time getting a store to devote its time to it. You're going to have a hard time getting your player base to devote its time to it. And then once you do, like if you do manage to get a good player base and community going for it, I think you're going to be severely disappointed by how shallow the format is currently. I will say this, and, and, I, and I do agree with what you're saying. There will come a time where Wizards is going to want a format that bridges modern and standard. It's possible. And modern was kind of created as a bridge between legacy and standard so modern kind of was that and we see how popular that got now you know modern continues to be pretty expensive to get into uh if you want to get into the format and i think you know we always talk about how legacy is really not going to get any bigger you know it, it will eventually die out um over time so um you know maybe maybe it's not a couple of years maybe it's five years down the line but you know they I think Maro even talked about this about having yes he, he another been on, another bridge format. He has um, been on the record saying that it, they there may be a time when they need a format between standard and modern, which I think is a, a very generic statement that is mm -hmm. likely true. But there's no time frame on that. Yeah, it's so, certainly not going to be one block bigger than current standard. Right, right. So I I don't think now is the time for it to become an official format. But I think it's fun to to think about, I and mean, I think it's it's cool to I I I've, I like that it's out there, and that you know it's something that people are are doing. Uh, here's my hot take. I think if there is that format, and yeah, it sure it comes within. I think it's almost 100 percent. Like take it to the bank, going to be post cons. Uh, I I just I don't cons is as a format has fetch lands right, which imbalances the mana heavily in frontier. Um, and, you know, we'll see. You know, if they, It's going to be a long time before they put fetches back in standard. There's a lot of speculation that the Zendikar fetches will be a Modern Master too because they don't want them in standard again. They don't like them in standard. Um, and it, it just makes imbalanced mana bases when you only have one set on it. We, ha we The same was true in Modern. The, the thing that fixed it a little bit was that you had the ten duels to go with those fetches so you could balance a little bit more. You don't have that, you know... It, at least not currently in, in Frontier. So not to mention the issues with Delve and, and just I think that any Frontier format is going to be is going to be post cons in my opinion. I, I think the thing that really bothers me though about people excited for this is just like I, I sat on here and like I, I enjoy I enjoyed cons cons block. I enjoyed cons standard. Yeah. I enjoyed the mana bases that were allowed. I enjoyed the cards that saw play. You know things like Jeskai Ascendancy were possible. Yes, Abzan got really really tough at the end yes we had many months of siege rhino but i was on here on this cast impassionally getting upset at people for saying it, you know oh well standard's too expensive and i said well you're going to have cards that are going to keep their value and I, I was literally just looking up the prices of like the uh the the cons fetches and they've they've ticked up a little bit in the last month but you're talking about 50 cent gains but they haven't really dropped from those highs no. they've been between 10 and 20 dollars since the rotation which meant that you weren't losing money on those cards, which was the whole basis for why Standard was expensive, outside of Jay's Friends Prodigy. Yeah. Uh, so I think that, like, you had so many people who are now excited about Frontier, and maybe it's because they did buy into those cards and they want to keep playing them, but all those cards are more than modern playable. They're modern staples. So it just seems arbitrary to be like, well, I hated this Standard format, but now I love Frontier! That's the set for me. It's like yeah, what? you know, it's the addition of the of M15 that really you know it really changes did it for things. you. Really it changes just, things. I, I don't. It, it seems so, like in my in my opinion, it seems so like disingenuous. Like I think this is all so much of it seems to be a push against standard and wizards to take notice of that. I right? think that's that's yeah. actually but the, the hugest feel, part like, of that. Frontier is not an open <laughs> format. You, if you if you keep throwing that at me, I'm gonna keep laughing at you. <laughs> so I, I, uh, maybe I, if your if your argument is it has more deck diversity than standard, you did it. You're right. I, I think another contributing factor is just the time of year that it is. We talked about oh, how sure. like it's it's very stale right now. We don't have any large tournaments. People don't like standard. I think it's kind of like a, a perfect storm of people don't like standard right now. There's nothing really going on. 
uh, even the writers on like Star City or Channel Fireball, they don't really have anything to write about. So you see a lot of writers being like, "Hey, look, check out this Frontier deck," or "Here's the here's the meta game that we have right now." It's like that's just feeding into it. Right. Yeah, and we're, we're, like, we're feeding into it by talking about it right now. We are. That's very true. But, I mean, we I, I think we tried to avoid it uh, as much as possible. Like the Frontier's been a thing when we were you know podcasting in December. So when we didn't, we decided not to talk about it. So I, I just think. It'll be interesting to see if it maintains this momentum going forward. You know, we have Aether Revolt about to come out. We have Amonkhet on the horizon. So I, we have Modern Masters yeah, 2015. Modern Masters. That's, uh, 2015. That's what 2017. We're going back in time. We're going back in time. Yeah, I, I, it I won't will, exist then. I will join. I will 100 join you, Morgan. If after the Triple GP weekend and our Modern Masters 2015 and all... 17. Or, man, I, <laughs> I did it to you. I did it. You, you gave me it's the, catching. You gave me the brain sickness. <laughs> uh, but like, if after all of that in the summer people are still hyped, and I mean hyped about Frontier, because even in our local community, even our local social media channels, we've, I've, there's been a lot of people who have been excited about it. And then they do the, let's get an event, let's get this. And nothing's happened. And, and that's not a, a shot at anybody. I know we have a number of people who will listen and think like, oh, that I'm... By all means, play what you want to play and have fun with what you want to play. But the fact that it hasn't fired yet, like, should speak to a, a lot about what it is. You know, just like with Tiny Leaders, it sounds like hype that isn't crystallizing. You know, Tiny Leaders caused a bunch of price bumps too. Look at the foils of certain cards that are, just went uh, unbelievably out, you know, out of this world, and then no one cares about them anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, if if Frontier makes it to this summer with people still being this hyped about it. Then you maybe you do have to consider it, but I feel like yes, with the new set and then going into Modern Masters and just, I think it's going to be really hard for Frontier to re- remain a relevant topic when you know all these websites. You're right, who are out of topics to write about right now, all of a sudden have new sets, then a Pro Tour, then another new set, then Modern Masters. Man, if there's so much Frontier articles, I will be impressed. Yeah, it's just sort of the the, the doldrums of uh, standard and uh, in a standard where people don't particularly like it. So they're literally looking for alternatives instead of like voicing their opinions directly to Wizards. To be like, this is not fun. And I mean, Stodd did have that tweet where people gave you know <laughs> yeah. feedback, but I, I really feel yeah. like I think it, they got it, the message. Well, <laughs> I hope so. We'll see. I, I think if they truly got the message, you'll see a standard banning next week. That'd be sweet. That would be very. I don't very even care what it is. I think it'd be Emberkull. I, I very, would hope so, but I'll just uh, say it'd be sweet if they banned anything. I think, I think it would be the most like, like you know, you had the banning of Stoneforge, Mystic, and Jace, and you. I think you felt a lot of people just go, "Thank God," right? But I think banning Emberquil would make a lot more people instead of feeling like, "Oh my gosh," they'd be like, "Okay, this format feels different now." Whereas before, I don't think you had people feeling that. I think it was just like, "Okay, now we just got to ride this out now that these cards are gone for the next two months, and then we'll move on." But now it'll be like, well, "Okay, we we still have Emrakul for how long? A long time, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the thing. Like Jason Stoneforge, that were almost out like, like by that months. point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll see. Sure. I don't know. Who? Who? Do, I don't know. But I, I don't think they're going to ban anything. But it'd be, it'd be cool if they did. So uh, I have another, uh, you know, kind of an interesting question, and something that I've been thinking about is. Um, when Wizards is you know, ready to uh, announce a new format, how do you think they introduce it? I mean, this theoretically, like a lot of landscape could change, but you also don't like so. Uh, Modern was introduced at the uh, Community Cup, uh, it was Magic Online format, and then it was first played at a Pro Tour. Uh, as a, a small introduction, and uh, people would say that damaged the format for a very long time. <laughs> now. Theoretically, uh, if we take the same rules going forward, none of the Pro Tours will be any other format right. but limited in standard. Um, now you could do Magic Online, which is you know a, probably another good way to introduce uh, a format if it's new and you need a way to somewhat control it, but you, you don't have a good small way of introducing this, right? Well, they could make it a Magic Online only. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, that's I, what I'm I saying. Think like Magic Online and like FNM. Yeah, F and M is less trackable. I, I think it's certainly less trackable, but n- numbers are trackable. Like you, event reporter can report all the numbers to sure, all people but playing in the events. I, I yeah. just uh, because I, I think that's what they're going to be worried about more is uh, interest and less yes. like actual cards mm-hmm. uh, or interactions decks that would be scary. Yeah, I I, I don't want people to, like to listening to like, think that like I I know how people in the Magic Community can be, and I know I've been very negative about this format. So I don't want you to be like, oh well, he, I think like. If you look at it logically, again, like looking at Wizards, like, say it's Frontier, right? 
and Frontier uh, and Wizards has to like try and, and track and market, right? Like, you know, think about how they were so tentative with Modern, and like Modern really did take off. But think about Frontier, like think about long term, right? Modern long term had a huge card pool. So you could, you know, even with bannings, you could really like hope that people play with this. But like, if Wizards came out and said, all right, Frontier is a format today, how quickly would people stop caring about it? And I think, and you were talking about Wizards has like people, like they pay to do this, to do this market research and this testing. And I think if you, if you really asked that question, you would say, all right, yeah, I don't, it's not a format that's currently built to last. So whatever format they would come up with in the future, you know, when I say like maybe they fire it off at FNM first instead of Pro Tours, they want a format that the people will embrace. You could argue like if you're sitting here, if you're sitting here and you're screaming into your headphones right now, they're embracing Frontier, I would say, I want, yeah, but I think they want a format with depth. I'll throw this out. Uh, it, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Frontier. No, you should throw it out. Let's throw it out. Oh, the no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, so I've seen kind of like two sides of the coin on this front, whereas some people say, hey, man, bring on all the formats. Like, the more, wa the more ways we have to play Magic, the better. And then other people are like, well, if so if we have another format, right, another competitive constructed format, does that actually hurt the overall, you know, community? Are we gonna like? Is it gonna be? Is, are people gonna be too divided between modern frontier and standard? I I think that'll be far enough down the road because like to legacy players' credit, you know, they they still go to GPS and they still do this. But I think further down the road, it'll just be them quietly. Like I think whatever the announcement of the new format is, will also go with uh, quietly. Where there's no more legacy GPS, there's no more of this. So there won't be like, and in modern, we'll settle into the. Like the, this the eternal is the format. Big yeah. format. Yeah. Because I think okay. Wizards would be very happy. You know, you have Vintage Cube and that sort of thing, but those are like Vintage Cube and stuff is cultivated by individuals at Wizards who work on these cubes. You know what I mean? Who embrace this? Uh, Wizards as a whole, current Magic R and D, I, they've been very happy to pretend that Magic pre modern just doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean. They sometimes they like to pretend that modern doesn't even necessarily that's, that's exist when have, developing I mean, new standards. I, you, when you think sometimes they this, like to think that standard doesn't exist. I, I, like something to remember, especially for those of you again who are on the frontier train. Okay, uh, and how have we not made a Star Trek joke yet? Yeah, sorry, I'm so, we have, we failed you. I'm sorry. It's, uh, an, it's an off week. You know, I'm you know. going to say the next line in Klingon. I can't speak Klingon. I don't know why I said that. I lied to you. Yeah, so. Failed you again. <laughs> uh, but it, but in all seriousness, like. So Wizards makes a lot of money. Like, as a subsidiary of Hasbro, they make a lot of money. Like, looking at Hasbro's portfolio, they're right up there with the biggest money makers for Hasbro. And Hasbro owns a lot of toys. Like, I don't know if you know that, like, as far as brands. So even though they make all of this money, they still can't hire enough of a development team that has time to test for modern. And you want to throw another format at them they don't care about? You see what they've done the legacy in recent years, where cards were like, it's like, ah, yeah, sure, you can have like, and the format's corrected itself because it's big enough, but like, they don't care what they put into these like bigger card pools, like things like Commander and stuff, like ah, whatever, you get this, ah, you get well, this. I I would argue, I mean, all the sets it, currently in Frontier are kind of the new design, for, I guess, of standard. Yes, and philosophy. cons didn't break any rules and didn't have any cards that have been banned in other formats. I'm sorry, your argument right there right. Is, is crushed by cons of Tarkir. It's crushed well, by cons. Okay. But we don't have, you know, Phyrexian mana levels of terrible design. You're not that far off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, like, look at the cards that are present in Frontier. Yes, you have to combine them with older cards, but like not. But well, not that's not even true of cons. Like things like Treasure Cruise and and Dig Through Time have been considered broken enough to not survive in other formats at all. And then, but you look at even things like the Eldrazi, right? Which were outright like all it took is a little bit of fast mana, and the deck was unbelievable. And even with an average amount of fast mana, it's tier one in modern. And all those cards are sitting there in Frontier. So then, any type of fast mana you'd ever print in that, you have to remember the Eldrazi exists, or else you have the menace again. Like it's just. They're not going to put the time into it. At least not yet. No. I mean, again, if they're not going to hire to do it in modern, they're not going to do it for Frontier, and your format's going to be bad. It's going to be big standard. You, yeah. you want Wait for a few years. Let Frontier not be big standard, and then we can talk about yeah. Frontier. 
you know, once once legacy is is you know finally transitioned into vintage, and then vintage is finally transitioned into <laughs> dust. dust. Yeah, I'm so glad we went to the same joke there. <laughs> then we could talk about maybe we need another format legacy, to mix legacy, it up. Vintage to dust. Yes, correct. <laughs> um, but right now it just feels like a little premature, and it feels like people are taking advantage of its prematureness at this point in time, which I think is fair. Uh, but if you want to play it, play it. But I would suggest you proxy cards, because. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's the actual truth. Why not? Because you're not going to need real cards for anything. Yeah. Dave, it's adorable that you brought Goblin Rattle Masters, hey, though. You could literally I need those. Flip, flip a card over and write Goblin Rattle Master on those. it. For, for what? For your goblin deck you're building? Modern, <laughs> modern goblins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The Rattle Masters are yeah. very yeah. good. Yes. In modern. It's good. Hey, it's, in, good. it's in big red. It's three mana, two twos. It's in, yeah. It's in, yeah. You, 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 you do realize that, like, the, the Eternal Scourge sees more play in Modern than Goblin Rabbit Master does. Shh. I'm just letting you know. Um, <laughs> if you are worried, but uh, for different reasons, for things like, um, you know, a Tarkus Command, possibly, you know, seeing a spike, or other modern cards that are Frontier playable, maybe it... You know, if those cards haven't taken a hit, maybe you might want to procure a set for yourself. I would suggest that. I, wow. Wow, you just, like, deleted everything you just said. Uh, so if you're worried about these things, buy into the fear, despite me condemning everyone for buying into the fear. <laughs> I would argue otherwise. Again, I just, look, I just looked up on the MTG stocks, too. Things like the, uh, all the, the cons fetches, right? They have an uptick of, like, 50 cents in the last month, but overall they've held steady, right? Right, so, so was, those are still comfortable buys that you could ever... I'm would... telling you that, like, Frontier isn't, isn't touching... Those are the staples. It's touching the things that people are specking on. Sure. I guess that makes sense, so, then. So, so I guess if people start specking on a Tarkus command, well, then, yeah. But I, I don't know how... I don't know how you could literally just tell people to buy a Targus Commands out of fear of the price going up when you just condemned all of these people for buying yeah. cards for the price going up. As a matter of fact, go buy like 40 of Targus Commands just in case. <laughs> yeah, buy, go to your local store, look someone in the eye who's asking for a Targus Commands, and then give the store owner more money than they're worth so you can rip them up in front of them. <laughs> Hashtag Frontier. I mean, I don't know. And Modern's I, at least a supported format. Y yeah, but can, are you really going to justify what you just said? <laughs> Uh, so what do, we, what, do, what do we tell people that want Targus Commands for upcoming modern events? Then they can buy a Targus Commands. You're okay. not allowed to tell them that, though. Oh, okay. You, you, have, you have removed yeah, you, yourself you've, from that You've planted the flag. You're the guy now. Yeah, you, have to, like, you have to die on the hill. All right. <laughs> uh, new magic tip. Don't buy any magic cards. There you go. Don't ever buy any magic. Just write on the backs of cards. Yep. And Proxy everything. Don't play in any tournaments because <laughs> your cards won't be legal. And never cut your nails. And just other hermit-like things. <laughs> no. If you need cards for actual genuine magic tournaments that are, you know... But that's not what you said. You just said if you were worried about the price of a Targus Man going up. You're... Yeah, because you need them for an actual tournament. I'm just saying don't sit on it if you need them. My wife is indignant. She's just sitting here on the couch. just indignant. I don't know who All she's right. indignant about. Is it me? <laughs> of course she's, it's you. She's, she's on medication. I think that's good. <laughs> anyway. We could be done with Frontier now. I, yes, I would love to said, be done with Frontier. the Collective Magic community? Yes. Fingers crossed? Oh. Hopefully. Give it a few years. I'm Keep hopeful. the cards. I'm Keep hopeful. the cards you yeah, got. I'm going to sit... I'm gonna sit on those on those cards. Yeah, I mean, those rabble maps. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Like, I, I see, but that's the thing. Like, I, I think that's the thing that people don't do enough, and and they're so desperate to make sure their cards don't lose value. But like, I I have my box in my in my you know magic you know, office where I still have you know four mantis riders, four siege rhinos, four you know four blank, four blank, four blank, four blank because they weren't worth very much at the end. Uh, and there was no reason to get rid of them. Yeah, rather and, than sell them for like a quarter. And they've all seen some amount of even like modern play, honestly. Yeah. So like there was no reason. To, I mean, heck, I sleeved up the Mantis Riders a few weeks ago. You know what I mean? Like so, so like, don't just like be better about rotation because that's that's the idea, anyways, right? Is like you you can sell your bulk. I mean, like sell what's going to be garbage. It's going to be garbage. But like if the card seems at all playable, then yeah, there's always a chance it's going to see play somewhere. So just don't. Don't feel like you have to frontier it because you're bad at your collection. And yes, I'm using collection like as both a noun and verb at the same time. It's a new form of grammar. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's a weird thing. That's, that's the that, frontier like, of grammar. That like breaks into like I when like when you should sell your you know standard cards to you know make the most sure. benefit. Sure, like, but and it's most like, of the cards that like, people really need a bunch of like you like Rabbit Master being an exception because that card was expensive, but like yeah. Siege Rhino was never expensive. No, no, Siege Rhino did get have the benefit yeah. of having like a yeah. A, well, I think it had a week where it was like six dollars, and then like it never got anywhere close yeah. to that again. But it was also printed in the uh, the, like I mean, the same Rider, though, the was Clash of, Pack. Uh, it was four of it, a tier one deck that never got above two dollars. Gold cards like that are hard. To are hard, with. yes, very, very hard. Ancestors, like it was a card that you know that. Now, granted, the other part of this the, is you have to remember a lot of those cards are cheap because of Jays. Yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard to make any other card in your deck expensive when the four of is a hundred dollars a piece. So, you know, could be crazy, I guess. <sighs> so, what do we got coming out this weekend? <laughs> There's a Frontier GP. Oh, lols. oh, that's not true. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> we were, yeah, talking about the future. Whenever that is. <laughs> uh, so uh, over the weekend, we do have GP Louisville, which is Legacy. Uh, there's no coverage on that. So if you wanted to watch Legacy, too bad. Go to Louisville and stand behind someone. <laughs> exactly. In the and, tournament and, hall. And go to game. It's a wonderful restaurant. Oh my gosh, it was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The restaurant uh, game is at your end step approved. And David Ochoa approved. Yeah, yes. that's way more that's, important that's than our stupid approval. Yeah, that's all you need to know. If, if you follow David Ochoa on Twitter, then you know he, he knows what he's doing when it comes to Correct. food. So. And then there's also the Super Sunday Series uh, Championship or end of the tournament. Yeah. What should we call what, whatever it? that thing is. Yeah. The Super uh, Sunday that, Series. That, no, that thing at the end of the year. The end of the tournament. Like there's no more. <laughs> yeah. So. But that'll that'll have video coverage. Yeah, that will have video coverage. And yeah. then the pre pre release. Are there any like names in that this year? I don't know. Have it checked. <laughs> Did do research. I don't think anybody. I don't. I don't even think the people commentating on that even know what it is. Wow, that's a bold claim. I'm sure they do. Uh, uh, well, they'll get filled in before the tournament starts. Uh, I feel it's like Troy like Aikman does. Hey, who's playing the Cowboys today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't care. It's football. <laughs> I so feel yeah, like we there's have, someone notable it, in there. We haven't had a uh, we haven't had a stream in a couple weeks, but I probably I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to watch it. But I also probably would not have watched GP Louisville either. <laughs> uh, Sam Black see. is a notable name. Huh? Uh, Peter uh, Sotrick. Jarvis U. Luis Salvato. Okay. Cool. Are they going to be playing uh, Aether Revolt Draft? Andrea Maguchi. Do we know what formats? Uh, Jacob Ball. Just, just going to read them all out. Uh, Don't uh, worry about it. He's just it. like at every end of your tournament that's ever existed. <laughs> Or beginning of year. I don't... I got uh, Michael Bondi. That's the last one. Everyone else is... We don't care about anybody else. <laughs> well, everyone else is... Yeah. I mean, you only got there. Whatever. You're good. I mean, congratulations <laughs> and all on all that all that good stuff. But, uh... But, well, <laughs> okay. The Wizards website is, like, ridiculous. Well, anyway, from what I hear, it's, like, a cool tournament to play in. Because you get to go to Wizards headquarters and... Yes. Uh, check out, you know... It's going All to be that stuff. seven Swiss rounds. The format is uh, one through three are going to be booster draft using three Kaladesh boosters, and then four through seven are modern constructed. Hmm. And the ooh, the top eight booster draft is going to be Eternal Masters. Ooh! ooh. Congratulations okay. to everyone in that tournament. I hope you do well. It, yeah, it, <laughs> it, <laughs> we got really negative here at the end. We shouldn't be like that. It's, it's the first. It's the first cast of the new year. New year, new us. Positive. No, same old us. Let's be oh, real okay, here. Yeah. Well, I'm, nothing's I, yeah, changing. I'm, I'm still pretty upset about if this. If it isn't broken, uh, don't fix it. And if it is broken, ban then it. too bad. <laughs> oh, I thought we banned things that were broken. <laughs> we can't ban us. I'm sorry. It doesn't really work out very well. Somebody could ban us. Apple? Or... No, we're, we're not even explicit, man. Konami, maybe. They, I hear they have access to the Shadow Zone. That's true. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> But we're not a pachinko machine, so I don't even think they care about us anymore. Uh, but can we have one of those with us on it, though? I don't think that's. Um. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Again, we're not Metal Gear Solid, so we can't be a pachinko machine. I, I've lived in a box before. <laughs> You're close. You're close. I'm a fan of exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> how are you on on-site uh, procurement? Can you 
pick up all your items and weapons? Uh, no, I'm pretty fat. Okay. <laughs> I'm not quiet. <laughs> not very good at stealth. What about overwrought cutscenes? Can you do <laughs> well, those? I can do that. Can you do a complicated storyline? I can do complicated storylines, and I can sound gruff. Okay. Yeah. How about uh, listening to a uh, man poop through a microphone? <laughs> Are you okay with Johnny Sasaki? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm cool with taking orders from a big snake. That's good. That's how that works. Right, big boss snake. Yeah, snake boss. Big snake boss. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly it. Man, we went real deep on yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid a little bit. Out of this. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, that that's going to be uh, everything for uh, this episode of At Your Instep. Of course, you can always find us on Facebook. Uh, you can do a quick search for At Your Instep, or you can find us on Twitter. Just do a search for Your Instep, and we'll pop up. And we have an at symbol in front of it, so it makes sense. Don't worry. Uh, we also have an email address, at yourinstep at gmail.com, in case you want to reach out to us through that uh, meme. Um, we uh, also uh, want to give a shout out to again our, our sponsor, Comic Town. You can do a quick search for them on Facebook, Comic Town Gaming Center, or do go to www.worldofcomictown.com. Again, that is a new website, uh, so uh, check it out. It's got you know all their events laid out pretty nicely and stuff like that. It's it's actually really great. So you should definitely you know take a look at it now. As far as you can download our show, you can always go to uh, iTunes and download us via there or through. Uh, the uh, Google Play Store, um, if you have an Android phone. Um, you can also go to MTG Cast and download us there and uh, you know, find a, 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 uh, another favorite magic podcast, if you will. Uh, typically, we suggest like Magic the Amateuring or something like that, but they've always uh, you know, done some great content, and you know, Wizards definitely uh, shined a light on them as well, so uh, we definitely support them. Uh, we uh, also, I, I, I think I ran through everything that I forgot where I was. I lost my train. I was my Tricera train. We'll be excited about, about. We'll talk about Tricera train. Yeah, be excited week. next week. Uh, so yeah, we will have the Palooza next week. So <sighs> be prepared for a very long, very arduous episode about your end step. Um, but zero uh, percent frontier. Zero percent frontier. All Aether revolt. Or, or we could talk about like how the cards fit into the current frontier format. No, stop it. <laughs> None of that is good. Okay, we won't be doing that. None of that is what I want at all, whatsoever. Um, but I, I, you know, I do believe that you know it's pretty much going to be everything for you know us this week. We uh, do appreciate you listening again. Uh, we wish everyone a happy new year. May your 2017 be better than your 2016, and uh, you have a wonderful one. Bye.